the News Channel 5 Network. This is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Our guest today is is one of Tennessee's three new Republican congressmen. He's Dr. Mark Green from the 7th Congressional District. Congressman, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on. Before going to Washington, you were state senator from the Clarksville area. How are you adjusting going from Nashville to Washington? <laughs> well, there are a lot of differences. You know, uh, there's more tunnels. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, it's different in a couple of different ways. You know, I went from the Senate in, in the state legislature to the House, and so it's sort of like going from the. And I, I, I don't normally say this. Other people say this, like kind of going from the House of Lords to the House of Commons. I mean, it gets uh, it gets ruckus up there. It'll, you know, loud on the floor. Well, never you, never happened like that in the Senate. You also went to serving in a legislature here in Tennessee. See that was a had a huge Republican yeah. supermajority. Now you're in Congress <laughs> in the House, where the Republicans have lost the House, yeah. and you're in the minority. Yes, that, we're in the you've minority. You've never functioned in a legislative body that's where you're the minority. Never been in the minority, and so this is new to me. It's it takes a little bit different, um, you know, methods and techniques to gain influence. Um, but uh, I think we're doing pretty well. I actually had a, an amendment on the floor of the House as a minority freshman just a few weeks ago. On, on So I was pretty excited about being able to get there. Now, you came to Washington uh, during the middle of the shutdown. Yeah. Um, you also came during this fight over President Trump's national emergency to fund the border wall that was a part of the shutdown itself. Uh, did you support, you support the president on that emergency wall? Yeah, I, I, I did, because I, I genuinely believe it is a crisis. I think 300 Americans dying every week from heroin overdose, 90% of the heroin's coming across the southern border. That, to me, is a crisis. But it's coming in through ports, not across the well, border well, itself. It, well, we're catching it at the ports. I mean, you can't convince me that it's not going across the border. We, we, we know it is. Uh, it, it, that would be like saying, uh, we don't know what we don't know. But do, so you voted against the resolution that would have nullified the president's emergency declaration. I did vote against it, absolutely. Uh, Twenty-five of your Republican colleagues, both in the House and the Senate, voted in favor of nullifying the emergency. Now that's being vetoed by the president, it will probably be sustained. But a lot of them feel like it sets a bad precedent, not just for this president, but for future presidents sure. who may just declare an emergency because they don't get their way in Congress. Uh, don't they make a pretty good point about that? No, I don't think so. You know, we had 58 emergencies already declared. I mean, President Obama did multiple ones, uh, and but this is one on the power of the purse. This has never been a time when, before well, declaring an emergency, because Congress he did. turned he down gave a 1.6 billion or a huge sum of money. Remember those images of cash on the back ramp of an aircraft landing in Iran? That was with a, a national emergency. So yeah, Barack Obama did do that, um, absolutely, and that was in. A, I, I well, didn't it agree with that. was in defiance that. of Congress saying, "Don't spend that money for this." And that's what he's doing. Congress gave the president the authority to do this. To do whatever he wants to. To, to do in, this, in to declare a national emergency, absolutely. Uh, let's also talk about Senator Alexander. He, he was one of those who voted against it, saying it's a bad president, that it actually violates the Constitution. Is he wrong about that? I, I think so, yeah. I mean, we gave him the authority to do that. Congress gave the president the authority to declare a national emergency. Fifty-eight have been declared. And this isn't like, you know, the, the real fear is that another president might get in there who believes differently and declare something like, uh, you know, we're going to take the guns back, right, to violate the Second Amendment. That's, but that's different than protecting the people of America. A national emergency is designed to protect the people of America. It's not designed to violate the Constitution and, and you know, the Second Amendment. So I, I disagree with, uh, you know, Senator Alexander on Senator that. Senator Alexander has announced he's not running for re-election next year. Your name comes up. You are interested in running for that job? Well, I, I am actually trying my best to be a great congressman right now. You just got there. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I am, uh, I, but I can't help but think about it. I get 100 calls a day, people asking me to do it. So, I, I you know, it's people kind of keep it on the you're asking everywhere I go people ask um, so it's it's hard not to think about it but really I am focused on just being a good congressman statewide campaign takes a lot of effort what's your timetable for that if you're getting 100 calls a day how do you even plan to run for office when you're answering all well, those we're calls? not planning right now right we're, we're just trying to be a good congressman uh, Senator Alexander's had a long and distinguished career Absolutely. Uh, his endorsement in a race uh, going into that next year might be helpful. Are you going to seek that? Is that part of your idea of what you want to look at as you're, as you're seeking or deciding what you want to run? You know, Lamar has been a friend and he, he endorsed me when I ran for the Senate. Um, and uh, you're state, right. State he's, Senate, he's, state yeah, Senate. State Senate. He is a, he is a uh, an icon in Tennessee politics. That's how I introduce him when he comes to Clarksville. Uh, governor, U.S. Senator, 
president of the university. I mean, he, he, you know, he's uh, Lamar Alexander, right? A lot on the resume. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, think the world of him, and it, it, you know, it, it, yeah. Former Governor Haslam's also thinking about running. He's considering what he wants to do this spring as well. Um, does your decision at all based on who else might get in the race? Has Governor Haslam been a friend of yours? Governor Haslam's one of the nicest people I've ever met. Have you, have you met Governor Haslam? I Hanlon? have. He is just been a, on the show several times. Yeah, he, he is a big-hearted guy. Um, you know, I, I, if I do this, what will make me make this decision? It'll be because I think I'm the best person for the job, and I feel called. I mean, I'm a person of deep faith. So I will put this before God, and my wife will put it before God, and if we feel called, then we'll do it. Uh, it, won't be, it won't be determined by who else is in the race. The Club for Growth uh, thinks a lot of you. They've urged you to run for the first for the, this congressional seat. They also apparently are urging among those calling you saying run for the Senate. Uh, yeah. They've got a pretty vicious a attack on Governor Haslam out right now. I don't know if it's on, on the air, but it's at least circulating around on the videos. Yeah. Uh, are you comfortable with that kind of attacks going on against somebody who might be an opponent of yours, at least has been a friend of yours? Do you want that kind of support? Jim Haslam, uh, you know, Bill Haslam's dad, has done fundraisers for me. You know, I, I, um, uh, I called Jim after that came out and said, you know, this, this isn't the way I do business. But uh, well, you Would know, you ask the club for growth to remove that video? Um, you know, I, I, I hadn't thought about that, but maybe we should. Uh, what do you say in response to people as you're making this this decision about running for the Senate that, gee, i am just got up here. I mean, people people who just, you've just, you, you went to the House, then sure. you went to the Senate. You didn't stay in the, in the state Senate very long. Now you're a congressman. You hadn't finished your first term. You might be running for, this, for the U.S. Senate. That sounds a little aggressive, <laughs> maybe a little... Uh, self-important to be thinking you want to move up that well, quickly. Yeah, I don't run for office for me, right? It costs me a lot of money. But people might no. think you are because no. you do it if you decide well, to run for the races. Actually. That's unfortunate, and I, I think that's short-sighted. I'm, I'm doing this because I love America and I love my state. And uh, look at my life. All my life I've been in service. 24 years wearing the uniform. You know, I got out and ran a company for a little while, and then I served in the state senate. I mean, for me, all of my life is about serving the people of this state. It, it's impounded in me. It's in my faith. It's what I'm supposed to do with my life, give back. Um, if I do that jump, it'll be because I think God wants me to do it and because I think I'm the best person for the job. That's it. Look at Governor Lee. I mean, he, he never had held office before. And he went straight to the governor's office. Look at the president of the United States. Never held public office before. Look at a guy like Tom Cotton, who was a single term House member who then went to the U.S. Senate. It, it, it's not aggressive to do that, and I, I kind of push back on that. This is about serving people, and if I think I'm the best person, the people that uh, the person that Tennesseans want, uh, I'll I'll do it. But that'll be the only reason why I do it. Congressman Mark, Dr. Mark Green is our guest. He's from the Seventh District in Tennessee, a new member of Congress. Back to continue our conversation with the congressman after this break.